This is Wilder 267, man. Once again, man, you're tuned in to Where's Wilder. I'm with the one and only, my man T. Grizzly, Detroit's finest. Yeah. And uh, it's about the D right now. It's about some real life stuff. Give it to him, man. You went to the joint. But we not gonna give him the play that anybody else heard. Yeah. You was out there, you was doing your thing. Yeah. I ain't gonna lie. When I, when I was out there running around, my old dude, right, he was like a weight man. Running. And my mama, she was too. Then they got locked up. And me and my brother, my sister, had to fend for, my, for ourselves. You know, and we never had to sell drugs because they did that. Okay. And we was only scared to do that because they be like, damn, they know the customers gonna tell them that we doing this shit. So we like, we just gonna take everything from the other niggas that's selling or whatever. You know what I'm saying? So one day we like, we gonna quit robbing people that's trying to come up like us. All right. You know what I'm saying? We gonna start doing this shit to motherfuckers who got it. Businesses and shit like that. You know what I'm saying? This all we knew though. I ain't saying this good, I ain't glorifying it, but this all we knew. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Niggas I grew up with, I don't wanna keep robbing their uncles and all that type shit. Okay. So we like, we came up with a plan. Started doing smash and grabs, taking Rolex watches. Okay. And the older drug dealers in the hood was buying them from us. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, shit, that's our hustle, that's how we gonna come up. You feel me? But at the same time, before my pops got killed, I still wanna make him proud, cause that's like my hero. So I'm still doing good in school. You know what I'm saying? Trying to get to college and everything. So hopefully one day I can break this cycle and we ain't gotta do this shit. But in the midst of it, he got killed. I got caught up breaking it, robbing the jury store and shit, and got locked up. Now I was locked up in different states. I was locked up in Kentucky, that's Commonwealth, like how it is up here. You know, Ohio and Michigan. So I was able to, I, I came out real polished. Yeah, you feel me? You see that you was around different players. Yeah. They're really touching real play. Exactly. Yeah, but, but you know, when you're in jail, you don't just be around drug and street cats. You be around lawyers, doctors, and all types, especially in the yeah. federal system. Yeah. Now, I want to ask you a real serious question. When you first came out of the joint, you already had some spit up in you. Like you said, I heard you talk about it before, is that different people was giving you the game because you were just repping from a Detroit state of mind. They was like, yeah. no, you got to mix that up. That's, that's cool we had it. Yeah. But that, that's cool for your block, but it ain't cool for everybody university. It ain't, Dudes down the A might go feel that. Dudes in LA might go feel that. Exactly. You switch your game and switch your mouthpiece up. Exactly. But when you came out of penitentiary on some real side of things, was it ever the fear there that damn, I can spit, but if this shit don't work, I gotta go. I gotta go smash some glass again. I was comfortable with that. That's the scary part. He was like, I'm. I was look. This is what I told myself. I'm like, I know exactly what type of life I want to live. You know what I'm saying? And I'm about to go out there and get some money. But before I do that, before I go back to you know what I'm saying, I'm gonna give myself a chance. And one thing I know I want to do is this music shit. And as soon as I came home, the first song I dropped took off. But but did you ever, you, you know when you were in the penitentiary? All, look, all the niggas I knew who I was calling from home, you know, that was answering their phones, they was all in the streets. Yeah. So I'm thinking, I'm about to go get in rotation with them. That's what I, that's my plan. I'm going to get this paper. Yeah, I don't know nothing else. I can't go back to school. I can't. But was it ever the time, you know how you be in jail, and then you realize that, dang, I'm really smart. Yeah. I'm really smarter than the average cat in jail because some of the things you might question and think about, like, damn, I could have moved this way, that, that way, that way. When did it click into you But you said, even though you said I'm going to go, when did it click into you, like, damn, I can't keep going this fucking route. This shit ain't going to work. It's just, it's just when you in there, bro, and you see how people on the outside treat you, and the conditions you're living under, the fools you got to eat, the way that the people treat you, the power trips they be yeah. taking, and the games the niggas in there playing with you. It's just like, man, I don't never want to come back here. Uh, nine out of ten niggas in prison think I would rather die before coming back here. Yeah, that shit real. That shit real. You know what I'm saying? The, the first thing we tell ourselves when we get out is, I can't come back here. I already got to come back here. And when I get out, I'm not fucking with niggas. Because the niggas out there, they they, they they not thinking like how. Yeah. You know, because we don't give ourselves a chance to sit down and think like how yeah. you there. Like when you're in the penitentiary, I think you got more time than any man on the planet yeah. to rest and think. You know, when you're in the pen, if you get tired, you can just go to the cell and lay down. Exactly. You can't do that on the street. You got to get this money. You can't play no games. Anybody leaning on you. All right, so when you got out, you jumped in the booth. You went right in. How long did it take you to go in and put that, put it down? When I came out? Yeah, how long did it take you? Man, I got right on that. I wasn't playing. I wasn't playing when I first came home. He was like, I ain't playing no I'm games. I'm not playing no game. I don't care about no sleep. I don't want to see no females or none of that. I need to go get my music done. It's a shot I want to get myself. I need to do this. Don't nothing else matter right now. All right, now, if I'm a young cat and I'm out here, and I'm like, damn, T. Grizzly came up off of one song. Like, if I'm looking at you, yeah. you got a lot. You got a lot of other people that didn't even put no project out. I mean, shout out to OT Genesis, always dropping banging singles. You dropped the single when it took off. Yeah. What game would you give a young cat that's out there 
that's, that's, that's just going in there. What, what game can you give him that you had that might can enhance his chances of winning? I'm going to tell you like this. And, and this from what I know. So, first of all, I don't know why you got the formula to this shit. Because if it was a formula to certain success, people would be selling it and everybody would be doing it. Two, it should only take three minutes. Three minutes to change a nigga whole life in that studio. You know what I'm saying? But it might not happen the first second, first or second or third time. It might not happen the hundredth time. You just gotta keep doing it. If this is some shit you really wanna do, you gotta keep doing it till you find some shit that works. If the same thing ain't working and you didn't let a lot of people hear it, you gotta switch it up. Cause I was rapping before I got locked up, that shit wasn't working. That's like when I got locked up in Kentucky, I'm rapping my music that the city going crazy over there. Like, yeah. man, that shit weak. That shit bullshit. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? I'm talking about old school. They're like, man, we like new cars down here, man. So you automatically out the door. You like, yeah, you true. You gotta be universal. You gotta be universal. You can't be one dimensional. And real outweigh fake on doing skills. You know, it's more people that, that invent with something than it is with spoon fed and all that type of stuff. You feel me? So go in there and tell your story. Somebody might relate to it. Because my story, it's people who ain't even been through it that can relate to it. Like, I just feel it. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? That's like watching a good ass movie like Creed. I don't box, but I felt the nigga. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, you what felt he was going through. Felt shit. Yeah, like that. Now, the whole thing is when you get into the music game, and, and, and now, you know, now you're at the level where this thing like, this is like 80s drug money. Yeah. I mean, uh, how how do you go about saying, you know what, I'm popping right now, you popping right now. Yeah. How long have you been in the game all together since you, since you first made that rap to right now? How many months? Shit, like a year and some change. Yeah, so, so a year and a half. Yeah. That's 18 months. Yeah. How do you secure yourself to say, 18 months from now, T Grizzly might not be the shit. What you gonna bounce back on? What you gonna hold on to? See, a, a, a nigga like me, the only thing I know to do is network and talk to people like you who thinking like that. Okay. Cause at the end of the day, nobody in my family never had no money. So there's nobody who I can call like what to do with this in case rap don't work. There's nobody who I can call. Everybody who I bump into trying to get some money. Yeah. Like, you know, they don't really care that I preserve. You feel me? So I'm never running into no real knowledge or I'm never running into no real conversations like you need to do this. And I didn't grow up like that. So as soon as I get it, I'm about to do what I always wanted to do. I'm going to walk around like this, or I'm going to go buy this type of shit. This is what I always want to do. Other than that, I don't know nothing. Well, I'm going to say this. With one thing you can do, go over there and start hollering to players at Pacific Heights over there, Silicon Valley. Yeah. Start getting some games out. You got people like, you know, Troy Carter. There's a, there's a lot of people that's in the tech world because, you know, the tech is everything. Because yeah. I say to myself, we, we say in the hood, damn, how am I going to get some money? What everybody want? Everybody wants some drugs. Yeah. But but did if you can say, damn, how am I gonna get some money? What everybody want? Phones. So how can Head I phones. listen? Headphones. How can I tap into that thing that everybody need? Everybody need water. Yeah. Everybody need you know clothes and shelter. Everybody need a phone these days. Yeah. So how can I tap into something that can jump on this phone? Or how can I invest my money into something that got to do with this technology? Because tech is living forever. Yeah. I mean, if you tell a woman that. Uh, you got, you, you got to lose your phone for a week or cut your boyfriend off for a year. Homeboy in trouble. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So it, you got that tech thing, you know, real estate, you always want to own something. Let me, let me see that one more time for one of my phones. It's crazy. As soon as you get to talking like that, my mind, I'm a thinker. Yeah. My mind get to racing. So say somebody like, I don't want to do phones. They, they, they already got a phone. They, everybody on an iPhone. So come up with a charger then. You feel me? Everybody need a phone charger. Yeah, everybody need a case. Charge. You feel me? Like these chargers, they that. Yeah, they, they Apple charge. They, yeah. So now I got, two, I, got, I got two batteries on here. Exactly. Apple make them. So you, you come up with accessories. Exactly. Something. Exactly. Come up with the accessories if you don't want to come up with Yeah, that's crazy. And like you can invest, you know, it's like we got to start investing in anything that people want. You can invest in all, it's all type of things, but we got to start looking at it and say, damn, okay. And realize when you get in a position like you in, anything free. Yeah. See, it can't, because everybody that they got the businesses, they got the stuff, they just want to be around you, they need you. So the jury you got on, it's cool to pay for it, but you can say, listen, man, I'm going to come up here, but I ain't paying for that. Yeah. That's the, that got to be the game where still, we got to start building lives. Yeah, we create the culture, but we got to start owning the culture on all levels and understand, stop letting people utilize us. Because a lot of times, they be utilizing. We just sit back and be like, man, man, I thought they didn't really look out for me. I looked out for them exactly. because I'm really the power leader. You got to know who you are, and you got to know, like, damn, I'm the power out here. I'm, I'm, that, I'm, that, I'm that cat out here. They need me. They, need, they really need me because 
when you go and buy a chain, right? And you know, you know how it is. The chain and the jewelry and the car and the drip, that's a celebration of that struggle we went through our whole life. That's a celebration of the struggle we seen our moms in the way like, so we like, fuck it, I'm, I'm turning up. We was king tough. We, you know, we, we, we gotta put these things on that. We wanna put that jewelry, we wanna drive the big cars because it's like, it's something in this genetically that come from ancient times that we was kings and all that, and that's cool. But it's like, hold up. You need me more than you. Give me that for free, man. Yeah. Car dealership, yeah, yeah, give me that, I meant you, y'all. Give me that for free. You see what I'm saying? And we gotta start investing in, we gotta understand that drip. Drip is not just some designers, motherfuckers that we ain't gonna never meet. We got a lot of designers out here that look like us that's creating drip. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And you gotta understand, we control cool. You control what you say is hot, that's what they follow. Y'all big corporations, y'all people that we never gonna meet, they're never gonna come to our hood and decorate the interiors of people, you know, struggle. Y'all don't dictate this stuff, we do. So whatever you say is drip, is drip. Whatever you say is hot, is hot, because we control cool. And you always gotta remember that with everything you do, because if you don't, somebody will pimp you out, and you'll be like, damn. Oh, I mean, you'll be like, oh, oh is, would you keep getting that? Like, is, is this really, this relationship mutually beneficial, or is it that you just utilizing me and my success and the people that love me to pump your product. Yeah. You gotta always keep that in mind, but like, one thing, I wanna get into your mom. I mean, shout out to her free moms, she in prison. I, I couldn't even imagine that. You see what I'm saying? I couldn't even imagine my mom and grandma, you know, just being in the joint, like, how, how, how is you working with that? How, you know, how is she doing? How is you working with that? You know what I mean? How, how, how does she feel also the success of my boy out there winning? Yeah. He ain't get killed. Yeah. She famous in there right now. I can tell you that. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but no, it'd be like, it be making both of our day when we get to have when we get to have a video visit and stuff like that. But it be it's, it's it's a lot of pressure. You know? And we try to keep as much hope as we can. Cause we go get all these lawyers and all that. And they give us hope, feed us hope and stuff like that. But they'd be on some bullshit and we have to get another lawyer and stuff like that. It's always another So, lawyer. you know, so the stuff we going through right now is like, when we got a lawyer and he working on it, we'd be happy. I'll be telling him, you about to come home. She's like, I'm about to come home in a minute. This is what you'll be doing. You know, and then when the lawyer get on some BS, that's when it really hit. Like, I'm going to come home. For those that don't know, how much time you mind? How, how long you mind been in the penitentiary? How much time is she doing? She got 20, she caught 25 years off the top. And then she ended up catching some more time. Right, she been gone since 2012. Mm -hmm. You know, I see. You know, and it's like, and this this somebody who, who I'm seeing every day. Who I'm, I need this for school. I need who coming over cooking Damn. all the time. Cause I was living with my grandma. Cause when she got locked up, my grandma had adopted me, my brother, and my sister. But we'd see her every day. You know, and she would bring the stuff. We'd go out with her all that time. But we couldn't always be with her cause we know she doing. She don't want us. Know, in the car while she's serving and yeah, all that yeah. type of stuff. You feel me? But for that to just get snatched away from you and then pops. And then I had a couple uncles that they got snatched up too. It's just like my childhood was like a horror movie for real. Mm -hmm. I don't, the stuff that they was doing, I ain't really seeing nothing wrong with it because I don't know no better. Yeah. I'm thinking this is the way it got to be. This, the, this is the way everybody, all the kids are going to do when we older eventually. I'm thinking this is what it is, but then when I'm getting older, Seeing them getting killed, getting maxed out in prison, it's just like, damn, like, that shit. It's serious. You know what I'm saying? It's real serious. And you you out here, you, it just, I can just imagine, you know, we say all the money in the world, it, it, it just don't always make you happy. You got the money, you got you got anything you want. But like, you, you get give problem, it off. You get problems, yeah, you will give it off. Give so. it off, mama. But you, you get off it. That's a problem money can't fix. Yeah. You feel me? That type of stuff, it just be crazy. Man. What's the problem, you, you know, since success, what is the main problem you get? Outside of the haters, what is the main problem, man? The main problem is just trying to, just trying to like get that feeling you always wanted, like the feeling I always wanted, right? I always wanted some money, so the people around me can be happy. We can finally like smile, have a real reason to smile, feel good. But not the success here. You go around with people, like, all right, bitches, I don't know. You the niggas plotting on you. Five ain't the same. It's like they want what you got. And then you dishes yourself like, I can't let them niggas kill me. And then everybody gets to talking bad about you. And it's like, man, this shit's scary for real. It's like, scary. You yeah. Kind of, yeah. I, 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 old head told me in the penitentiary, he was old, he was in the streets forever. <coughs> and he said, man, I told him one time, I said, yo, man, I don't like them dudes. Them dudes had me paranoid, right? 
He said, listen, man, it's the best thing you can ever be is paranoid. He said, that's how I lasted this long because I, everybody, when I was in the street game, everybody was suspect. I felt as though everybody was out to get me and everybody was trying to get what I had, trying to knock me off. So they always kept me on my toes. And, and even though you saying these stuff is, is a little messed up because you're like, oh, I ain't even in the streets no more. Yeah. I'm getting rap money, I'm getting legit money. But it's still coming. You're trying to break bread with niggas. And that shit just don't be it just it don't be what you thought it was. They 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 don't even accept it how you thought you you think niggas would be thankful, like, bro, this would have never happened for you if I didn't do this. And I don't even want nothing back and niggas just be They response don't be what it need to be. Mm -hmm. They go fuck it up and just act like it never happened. Like, bro, that's crazy. You know. How bad I wish somebody would have did that for me. Somebody hit me off with 10 bands. Man, I, you got to flip me. If somebody hit me off with 10, I would have never looked back. And they would have always known for as long as I lived that I appreciated that. Did you ever hit somebody off with 10? I didn't hit niggas off with dubs. Totally. Just, just, just on some, you my man. Just on get some. Get on. Nigga, you ain't got to go through that. These yeah. people gave us some money here. Now go do what you know to do and then, but that's a stepping stone. And then, nigga, find something. You come work for me or something. But this is just for you. You know, my nigga here, I love you, nigga. Same nigga, but you would see talking about you. Like, damn, that shit just hey, wild. Yeah. Like 20, that's a lot of money getting out. I want to tap into another part. Niggas ain't giving out 20s. If a nigga get, 20, no 20. If a nigga get 20 in my hood, he feel like he rich. That's back in the day, 80 street drug lord stuff. You know what I'm saying? Somebody get somebody give 20. And you came off from the jail, give a boys 20. Yeah. Now. Man, give me $20. That's crazy. <laughs> that's crazy. Now, the management side. Yeah. Your manager, did you go right into having a good manager from the rip? I don't, okay, so look, this is my management situation, right? My manager was like the only person who I had at the time, which was my auntie. Oh, I was asking niggas, help me buy this video, help me pay for this video, help me buy this beat, help me get an outfit for the video, for the first day out video. Niggas ain't want to do it. These niggas who had a lot of street money went to my auntie. All right, I'll pay for it. I got you. Boom. I'm a manager. I don't know what I'm doing, but shit, we gonna learn as we go. Fuck you, come on. Quit her job and everything. We just went on here with it, and we just been straight off this shit. Every what was the first big check you got? You was like, yeah, I'm really a rap. I'm listen, gonna get money. Man, listen, I have a dollar in my pocket. I'm sitting. I'm talking to the lady. First day they say fifty. I'm like, I'm telling Tap for her, man, get that. We need that. They said fifty thousand. They said fifty. I'm like, I'm like, get that. We need that. You feel me? She's like, no, we're not taking no I'm like, man, I don't have nothing. You straight. You got a house and car and all this shit. I don't got nothing, but I need that, I need that money. They said photo. Hold up. Hold up. The first big shit, they said 50,000. They said 50. But my song only been out for a few days though. A few days and they said 50. Yeah. Dang it. I'm like 50. So then she like, no, we should go wait it out. I'm mad as hell. I ain't never had. I ain't never had. I ain't never had 50. You feel me? So I heard that what I needed. They get to talking and talking. They come with 200. I'm like, I don't know what you talking about. We taking that. So go get that or I'm about to call on myself again. We took the 200, boom. 200,000. 200,000. Like a month later, I'm getting booked for 20,000. Money that I'm getting booked for 40,000. Like six months later, let me come with a check for a million. Damn. Like six, seven months after that, you want to do something else? We got four million. I'm like, damn, come on. Oh man, so you, so you, you know like, what I'm saying? You like, you like this shit is fake. Man, this shit fake. I ain't even used to freedom. Yeah. I ain't even used to freedom. So imagine going on stage, people screaming, all this money coming in. It's like this shit is a dream. Damn. You know what I'm saying? But then you got people like my mama, who I used to be rapping to. She be like, yeah, you sweet. And then pull off and go do what she do, or my old dude. Who used to give me seventy dollars to pay for the studio, or my uncle, who used to jump on little songs with me. Can't none of them see it, or feel it, or be here. And it's like, damn, do you know what people give me and how they reacted to me, like. And there's only so much money you can have in your commissary. Bingo. And it's like, damn, I want, I want, I want you, I want to buy you this house. Exactly. Oh, I want to get you this and that third. But your aunt, what's your aunt name? JB, right there. Shout out to JB. Oh, this is JB. <laughs> Come here, can I get, can I get you on screen, JB? See, JB don't want to get on the screen, y'all. <laughs> JB said she turned out at 50. Yeah. He was like, I'm going to cut Ozzy off. Yeah. She turned 50 down. She turned 50 down. She turned that 50 down. But now y'all go on the next level. 
And it just goes to say is you never know who's gonna be your manager. You never know who could be, you know, you were thinking somebody gotta be established, you gotta know the game. She didn't know nothing about the game. She just like, this is my nephew, I'm rocking with him. I'm gonna go in here and talk to these people. I'm from the street. So I got some game up under my belt, and we gonna figure it out. So now y'all just run around the world together. Right. What's the best place you've ever been to? I ain't gonna lie. I had a show in Paris, that shit was turned. I had a show in Hawaii, that shit was turned. The best place? It's kind of hard. I ain't gonna lie, it's kind of hard. It's kind of hard because it'd be, it be places like that I don't even be thinking. Like like tonight, for example, out here in Philly. I ain't know they was gonna go like that. You know what I'm saying? Like, I know they know who who, who I am, kind of. I'm a little established out here for the street people. But it's all white people out there. They saying that shit word for word. The streams. You saying yeah. nigga, all type of shit. I'm like, oh, they fucking with me. Did you ever peep your streams? I be, I be, I be yeah, watching it, but, it but, but it don't really hit you till you go out there and see that shit. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, you can make the money, you can see it, but when you go out there and it's just electric, that shit be like, damn, this shit for real. It's a new film. Now, before we go, I want you to, I, w I just need you to say something to the little homies out there. Not just all of us, it's out there that's operating outside of law that's in the street game. You coming from prison, I got a segment I always do called The Cost Too Much to Be a Criminal. Talk to them, man, tell them some real shit, man. I feel like man, the, the the it ain't it ain't worth the risk, man. If you sell it, if you sell a drug, it ain't worth the risk. The money you gonna make, it ain't worth going in there for all them years, have your life and come out and everything changed and you gotta get back used to shit. When you dead, don't nothing when nothing worth it, cause you ain't even get to live your life. You know? A lot of us is doing shit just to show another nigga that we'll do it. You know, cause and, and I know that for a fact, cause I was one of them niggas. It was a lot of shit I didn't even want to do, but I felt like my niggas looked at me like I was soft or something. So I did it just to show them niggas like, nigga, hold on, I ain't, you know? And it got me in, it got me in a lot of trouble, so. Man, listen, you gotta think ahead. You gotta think six moves ahead. 10 years from now, you're gonna be a whole new person. The shit you do right now is gonna determine whether that person is a bum ass nigga or a nigga that got his shit together. No, so right now it's the grind. You know, grind now so you can chill later. Or you ain't gonna never be able to chill. You gonna be eighty, trying to get some money, asking the young niggas to live for twenty dollars. I done seen this shit. You feel me? So ain't no time to waste, and it ain't nothing gonna be easy. You know, I know you be like that's too hard. I'm just gonna do something else that'll be a little easier. Ain't nothing gonna be easy. Nothing at all. So you gonna have to niggas just gotta get out here. Face the world, be ready to work hard. Think about the future. If you plan on living, shit, that's all I can tell you. Well, listen, man, that was a raw game for my man T. T. Grizzly, Detroit Finest, man. What's important is, man, I'm Wild 267, man. This is T. Grizzly. This is where it's wild on. It's just like that.